Hello and welcome to We Built This White Lake. My name is Amy Van Loon and I'm the Executive Director of the White Lake Area Chamber of Commerce. And with me today is Managing Partner Brent Rath with Catchmark Technologies. Hello, Brent. Hey, it's good. Great to be here. Great to it see you. It is. Well, thanks for joining us. We Built This is going to be a series of different podcasts where I'm going to be interviewing and speaking with area businessmen and women in our community so they can share with us uh, a little bit about their business. And that is what Brent is going to do Absolutely. here today is to um, share with us a little bit about um, your company and what uh, Catchmark Technologies does. So go ahead and take it away. Yeah. So I, I guess I would start with a little bit about kind of who I am and where I came from. Um, I am a Montague graduate, um, 1995, which for a long time, didn't seem like that long ago, but uh, I was at a uh, kind of a business development meeting this morning, and I asked somebody when they graduated, and it was like 2010, and I mm. was like, oh, I kind of, I kind of feel a little old. <laughs> it's been going on 30 years. So I'm a Mon Montague grad, Montague native. I uh, have a lot of roots in in this area. Um, I uh, I went to Western Michigan University, Muskegon Community College, and Western Michigan University, then the service. Then I came home. I went to work on the east side of the state, um, all doing tech work. Um, and uh, in 2011, we moved back here. Um, and again, I, I love this area. I, I joke around a lot about the fact that, uh, you know, I spent a long time trying to get out of here and a long time trying to fix that mistake and get back. So in 2011, we moved back with my family. I had a job with a company on the east side of the state that didn't care where I lived. I did cybersecurity consulting, um, worked out of the house, flew all over the place. Um, that that uh, business venture was good. Um, it was a really small company, like as in like four or five people. Um, there was just, uh, I didn't enjoy being away from home and my kids were getting to the age where, uh, where you know, they noticed a lot more when dad wasn't around. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now they could care less, but, uh, I'm um, sure that's not true. It's probably not, but, um, but, uh, you know, so I started uh, kind of looking for something else and, um, in, you know, about a year and a half year after moving here and, and doing that job, a really good friend of mine who I went to high school with a lifelong friend, probably my best friend in, in school. Um, Chris Dawson called me and, uh, Chris worked for a company called Ag Business Solutions and Ag Business Solutions uh, does back-end business services for a very large dairy co-op, um, mm. one of the second largest co-ops in the United States. Um, if you've ever had Core Power, Fairlife Milk, that's kind of kind of their they're part of that co-op, that group. And Chris asked, you know, over the years he he knew I was in tech and he'd ask me questions. You know, he's a CPA by trade and he he'd call and be like, hey, should we invest in this tech thing? And he'd take me out to lunch and, you know, I'd I'd give him the lowdown on what I thought. And he was calling for my opinion and my hmm. advice. And he said, hey, uh, um, we're at the point where we need to hire a tech director, CIO, whatever, whatever they wanted to call it. Um, and uh, I'd like you to look over the position description and I'd like you to, um, to uh, you know, tell me like what salary ranges are we looking at here? And, um, you know, he just really wanted advice on how to hire. Hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, Chris might say today that he was strategically asking me, but I don't think that's true. I think he really was just asking for my advice. And so I said, um, tell me a little bit about this. And he kind of went over it and I said, I'm not going to help. And then he's like, why? And I said, cause I'm interested. Mm. And so, um, I have to be fair to Chris. We went through the whole round of interviews. I went down and interviewed with another one of my partners at Catchmark, Rick Blau, who is the managing partner of ag business. And, um, everything went really well and they offered me the job and I said, eh, I'm going to, I'm going to stick where I'm at right now. I just, I, you know, like there's a little bit of a salary difference and just some other things. And, um, so I, I told him no. And he, to this day does not let me forget it. Um, Jeff Burrell, my, our other partner did the same thing to me when I first offered. So, uh, I guess it's fair play, but, uh, about a month later I, I called Chris back and I said, Hey, uh, I'm, I made a mistake. I'm interested. I really want to see what this is all about. And I took the job with ag business. And so my role at ag business was really to do the tech stuff for the co-op. And so, um, you know, contracting groups kind of like what Catchmark is now, mm -hmm. um, to come in and provide, uh, tech support for 
farms and associated businesses, I mean, th- th- their group supports, you know, 170 different businesses all across, across the agricultural industry. Um, and, you know, so rolling this out, I mean, we had dairy farms in Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, oh. Wisconsin, Iowa, South okay. Dakota, businesses all over that footprint and trying to figure that out. What I found out really quick was there's not really a lot of tech companies, the, the tech company model, the managed service provider model does not fit really good for, let's call it, um, oh, I don't want to, I don't want need, more of a needy services kind of group. Mm. And so what I mean by that is somebody that needs a little bit more personal attention. Mm. Um, managed services is set up to remote support, remote support only, and um, do is, is, pretty much as little work as you can to kind of get the job done. And so the, the companies that I was contracting with, um, it just wasn't working. I was still getting all the phone calls. And so we took a step back and I said, what if, what if we did this ourselves? What if we, other businesses of this size have to be experiencing kind of the same thing. And, um, my partners were, uh, they're like, yeah, and uh, let's do this. And so we we started it when we started Catch Market. It was just me. Okay. Um, I was doing all of the tech support, all the business development, all the growth stuff, driving back and forth to Indiana and Ohio. And it was a pretty crazy time in my life. Um, I'm glad I'm not there anymore, but I, I definitely am uh, joyful for the experience. I learned a ton about how to run a business and what to do. And um, I just knew that that wasn't going to be sustainable if we wanted to grow. And we so quickly we hired, um, maybe about a year, year and a half later, we hired two two new guys. And, uh, you know, the rest is kind of history. We, we've grown significantly um, in size every couple of years, um, all off word of mouth and reputation, which I'm really proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, to date, we're at about 23 employees, 14 full-time Um, the rest part-time, um, two offices, one here in Whitehall, um, one in Grand Rapids. I don't do much tech work anymore. Uh, I'll be honest with you. What, what my guys would consider tech work, tech work. Other people might be like, oh, you're, that's still tech work, but it's, I'm not a technician according to the rest of the team anymore. So, um, and it's just been a really wild ride. When we first started 99% of our business and our work were from that built-in group, right? So we, we service ag business, we service the dairy farms, we service those types of things. Um, we're today, we're probably more like a 90% external, 10%, 5%, something, um, the, that internal group. So we've grown significantly outside of our own group. All, most all of those same companies are still customers of ours. Um, we're in the same building as ag business in, in um Walker and Grand Rapids. Um, so, you know, like, uh, we still have really good relationships with a lot of those groups. We still support dairy farms. Mm-hmm. Um, we still do that. And I got to give a shout out to Curtis Holden. Um, we did a customer sur- satisfaction survey and, um, he does most of our dairy support. One shout out for doing dairy support. Mm-hmm. It stinks. It's not a, it's a dirty job. Um, even the tech piece of that, um, every single customer that responded to that, that was Curtis's customer would like, Send us Curtis all day. He's phenomenal. So, so yeah, so that's kind of, kind of where we came from. Um, I would say where we're at now, how we ended up in Whitehall, that's, that's basically we're from here. So Mm -hmm. organically, as we started to grow, people would ask questions about what we do. And I'd tell them, Hey, this is what I do. We're in Grand Rapids. And we started picking up customers, um, kind of along the lakeshore. And it was all because of relationships, right? Like if I could tell somebody, what do you need to do to grow a business? Build relationships. It's it's pivotal to that. And so we didn't have a ton of organic relationships in Grand Rapids. That's not where Jeff and I are from. That's mm-hmm. not, you know, um, so a lot of the stuff we started seeing was this direction. Um, you know, I got to... I got to talk a little bit about Viking Tool, um, you know, uh, Mr. Rick Seaver and uh, and Jeff down there, like um, they were one of our first customers in this okay. area. Um, and, you know, they called us because they knew about us. They knew who we were. We went in and talked to them. You know, Rick went as a Montague grad, like there's just all kinds of other knows knows Jeff, knows Jeff's dad, knows my mom, had my grandpa in high school. I mean, you, you guys know how that kind of stuff sure. works. So, um so we started doing that work. We started growing here and um, Rick owns the building next door and said, hey, why don't you put an office here? Of course, I think that was a little 
you know, he wanted help, more help too. He figured if we're right next door, how can that be bad? <laughs> um, and so we moved, um, Bob Yonkman, we hired and Bob was working out of Grand Rapids. We moved him to, to Whitehall to support, um, Rick, um, in Viking tool. We had also picked up another relational reputation kind of thing, uh, Erdman machine and Scott Erdman, um, who is still a customer of ours. And we just started picking up more and more customers in this area. So, um, Bob, Bob moved here. My wife, Kara, decided to come onto the team. She worked out of that office. Eventually, we got to a point where we needed more people here. Um, and so um, we started outgrowing the space down there. And Amy, I think you you visit us. That's probably the first place I really met you is coming, coming down and talking to us about the chamber, right? I like, did. Yeah. I had heard about this company called Catchmark Technologies and I was intrigued. Yeah. So um, I said, let me go check it out. And I remember that space. It was, uh, it was small. Mm -hmm. We fit, it worked. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, I'm a big, one of my favorite quotes is you, you prepare, prepare the, prepare the person for the road, not the road for the person. And yeah. so, um, I, you know, we can do work anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, you know, if you start to look at some of that stuff and you got to have the best of this or the best of that, you start to, I think you become a little complacent. So it was a wonderful space. We put some money into it to renovate it, to make it just comfortable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we, mo we grew out of it pretty quick. Um, you know, I would say this area has been a success for us. Um, and it was real quick. We we're like, we need a different space. And so we started looking, I looked for probably another year, okay. um, different buildings around the area. Of course we looked in Muskegon. We, mm -hmm. we looked in Grand Haven. Um, we really had a desire to stay in this area. Um, one of the things that I, um, I want to keep local talent local. Um, and to do that, we have to have opportunities. And so, um, you know, uh, I just, I felt like this was a place that we wanted to give back to. And, um, and also it, well, the opportunity was here. This building was available that we're sitting in today. And, um, we use local companies, Brad and Van Bergen and Winberg, uh, renovated this space for us and Brad was great. Um, and, and we just want to make, wanted to make it home. So, uh, you know, I think it, uh, it all worked out and we're glad of the connections we made. So, um, from a business perspective, we do a little more than, um, than what we started doing. Um, okay. so we started with just tech support and, uh, just managed services, which is basically, you know, you, you a, sm a small business grows to a side where they rely on technology enough where they can't, they can't necessarily do that all themselves. And so, um, but they also can't afford to hire a tech person, right? Like, like a, a tech resource, even coming out of college who kind of knows not very much. Um, you know, you're, you're going to be with salary and benefits. You're, you're going to be mm. biting off a big chunk of change and they're, they're likely not going to be able to solve all your problems because they just don't have the experience. And so our sweet spot is with businesses like that. They're, they're kind of too big to do it all themselves, but they're not big enough where they're going to hire their own internal tech team which if you think about that market, that's a pretty good size market. And one of the things I was surprised about this area is like, I, I just underestimated the amount of businesses that are here okay. that meet those criteria. So like we, we've picked up numerous customers in this area that I'm like, I didn't really even know you existed. Like this is pretty cool. Um, so that's what, that's what managed services does. We still do that work. Um, that is probably our largest service area it's kind of what makes the money for us to do all the rest of the stuff and venture out and try to do new things. Um, Mr. Jeff Burrell uh, manages that service. He's a partner and he's also a, he's a directing partner. So he he takes care of all of that stuff. So if you came to Brent and said, hey, I got this tech problem I want to solve, I'm likely going to say, hey, Jeff, can you help this person out? Like, um, So Jeff takes care of that. Um, we also mer uh, branched out into some other service areas. So Bob, I mentioned Bob Bianchman joining our team. Um, Bob uh, has some web dev development background and uh, we were subcontracting a lot of those web services. And so we said, people come to us, customers, we're doing their tech support. Hey, can you develop a website? And we're like, we can, but we're clunky at it, right? Like we're not, we weren't great at it. It's not what I did for 15, 20 years, right? And so um, Bob, it was what he did. He, he has a, a brother-in-law that, um, used to use him all the time for subcontractor work. So he'd do it out of his house. And Bob's like, I think we can take this on. And so that kind of started what I would call our digital marketing services area. Bob started doing websites for customers. 
Um, and then we start customers that ask us, hey, do you have any photos we can use? Mm. Hey, we need a new brand. Can you help us with that? And it all just kind of organically became digital marketing. Of course, it's still a really small piece of our business, okay. but um, it's something that the team really enjoys. We have you know, we have a couple of videographers on the team. We have a writer, uh, Scott DeCamp from M Live. Um, Amy Van or Amy Van Loon, Amy Yonkman um, handles all of our project management in that area, um, and that that area kind of grew. And then we also do cybersecurity, and that's uh, a gentleman that's a Whitehall uh, native um, who kind of worked with me in different areas in my in my life in different places I worked. Um, Brian Cyberry, um, his last role was as as a CISO for the. Program Executive Office Ground Combat Services, I believe, um, which is a fancy way of saying he he did cybersecurity for Army vehicles oh. um, on the east side of the state. And I'd been bothering Brian about coming and helping us out for a long time. He joined the team about two years ago now, year and a half. Um, and so we do cybersecurity work for um, mostly manufacturing and healthcare businesses. Um, you know, a lot of manufacturing businesses that do work for the Department of the Army now have some requirements contractually to do cybersecurity. And so they've never done that before. Mm -hmm. And and so we have a wealth of experience in that area. So if there's anybody out there that has a manufacturing company is struggling with stuff like CMMC or NIST uh, uh, NIST cybersecurity programs, we, we can help with that. And Brian's phenomenal at that. Um, you know, and then our sports net stuff, yeah. um, which has kind of been a my crackpot idea, okay. um, which started in COVID and really has grown. And, um, I mean, I think in 2022, we had a million, 1.2 million views on our website, wow. which is insane. Um, and starting into 2023 in January and February, about 200,000 views a month. Um, our social stuff has blown up. It's really been good. Um, you know, we're, we're, definitely trying to figure out ways to pay for that is, you know, okay. the sponsorships help a ton. So mm -hmm. if anybody's listening and wants to, uh, to, to market to a, a place that gets a ton of visibility and that uh, gives back to the community, that's what we do. And we're all up and down the lakeshore. So uh, communities all over those places. So that's just, I guess, a little about us. I went for a long time, Amy. That's so, uh, okay. No. Um, and you touched on a lot of different areas, you know, what you do, um, where you came from and in talking with businesses in our community as they land here and they build and they grow. One question I like to ask is why White Lake? Why White Holler Montague? Yeah. Um, I, so first for me, there's a, a little bit of personal, um, there's a personal piece of that. Um, you know, uh, I, there's just good people here. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it's funny. I, I look around the friends that I had and the graduating that graduated with me or that were in school with me. And I, I look around and I'm very proud of, man, there's some really, really successful people that came from small town that, um, you know, didn't have maybe some of the electives that the bigger schools did and didn't have these things. And I think it's a real testament. The type of people that come out of small towns, I think are just, I don't know. They're different. And so, so there's a little nostalgia there. You know, sure. my, my family's here. My roots are here. My dad's from Shelby. My mom's from Montague. Um, you know, and I just, I, I just really, these are my people. Mm -hmm. And so that there's a little bit of that. Um, the flip side of that is from a professional services perspective. Um, and we've talked about this a little bit. I think with COVID, with the rise of remote work, I think there's a lot more people that are taking that option to move to smaller areas because they don't have to live in the bigger areas. Mm -hmm. And so matching up and meet, meeting those people in places where, um, where they are. So prof having professional services and having a group that can do those things and supporting the businesses that will also support those people. I think, um, I think we're going to see a bigger shift to that. And, mm -hmm. and some of these smaller areas might become a little bigger, which, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully we can retain the charm there. But, um, and then also, I think just one of our big tenets of our business is helping people and solve problems. And I think um, you got people have to trust that that's really what you're about. And that's a little easier to do in a smaller community. And so that fits really well. And then you can see your impact more mm -hmm. in, a, in a smaller mm -hmm. community. Like, um, you know, if, if we had set up shop maybe in Muskegon, 
Um, you know, there's other tech companies there. There's, you know, you can get a little bit lost in the shuffle. Um, same thing with Grand Rapids. Um, so, you know, we wanted to be in a place where we could make our mark and fill a need. And so that's, if you're a company that's looking for something like that, I, man, what a, it couldn't be a better place than the White Lake area, I think. I so, um, so yeah, does that answer your question? It does. Yeah. And then some, and, and you already touched on my next question. How has Catchmark Technologies impacted our, our community? Just maybe even share with our viewers, uh, you know, an example. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't like to, I don't, I don't like to talk about that stuff. I, I, I'm giving I, you permission to break. Right. So, um, yeah, so I, I think we've, we try to help people and solve problems. And so any chance that we have to do that, that's what we do. Our, our definition of success within Catchmark is not dollars. Um, we, and this is across our partners, right? Like um, across our leadership, it's about, we feel like if we help people and solve problems that the dollars will come. And, and um, you know, we also feel like um, I'm, a, I'm a freedom guy. So like, I feel like people should be able to make whatever money they can and they should be able to spend that where they want to. But I'm also a responsibility guy. I feel like if you have success, you, you absolutely can do what you want with that success. But I feel like they're, they're those people have a responsibility to give back and I would never demand that they do. Um, but I would say you have a responsibility to give back in what way you think is appropriate. And so that's just what we try to do. Um, you know, whether it's stuff like providing free Wi-Fi for the social district district behind our building, um, we've helped out um, with the library lockers next door. We, you know, we hooked them into our internet and ran cabling and put a camera out there. Um, the Arts Council of White Lake, we, we provide free tech, provide free tech service and stream some of their concerts for them, um, knowing that they're a nonprofit and that they need help. Um, you've you know, also become a really big part of the chamber of commerce. We have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I can't say enough good things about what you guys do down there. Um, one of the best things that I've gotten involved with is, is your organization in the chamber. Um, you know, this, our chamber should never go away and never leave this area. And, Thank um, you. Amy Van Loon should work until, she's a thousand years old because she's phenomenal happen. at what she does. And that can't happen. Uh, yeah, I know, but we could, we could try. Hey, <laughs> maybe you don't know where science is going to go in the next couple of years, Amy. And like, we could, we could figure that out, but, um, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be an active part of the chamber of commerce. Um, I'm, I'm on the board. Um, I'm the chairman president of the board right now. Um, I'm involved in the schools. So I've coached youth, I've coached sports, um, you know, we have different teammates here that do the same thing. We encourage our teammates to get out and help people. We encourage them to be parts of the community. Uh, Jonah Kelly coaches soccer at Shelby. My wife's the varsity soccer coach at Montague. My oldest son who works with us, Connor, is coaching White Lake Youth, and he's the assistant uh, golf coach at Shelby this year. Um, and then we get involved in, in other stuff too, like streaming parades and yes. and doing, you know, Whatever we can do to help, I guess, is what we what we like to do. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot of ways that probably I'm missing that my teammates help people that I don't even I don't even realize. So sure. just being involved. Even the um, the cameras that you have, you know, on our building are yeah. really cool. Um, if any of our viewers have ever seen the cameras on our website, Causeway cam, um, yeah. Causeway camera, they're they're a pretty cool thing as well as the camera out at yeah. the uh, channel. The channel. Yeah, we absolutely, I'm not doing a good job of uh, highlighting some things that no, people can go look at. No, you're doing great. So, um, yeah, so we support the, the, the camera in the White River uh, Lighthouse. We put Causeway cams up. I'm still, I was actually just talking about those this morning with somebody. Um, I'm still amazed at the traffic that those get. Is that right? It's nuts. Yeah. yeah. Like what a great thing though. Like, uh, provide something for the community and then the chamber gets website traffic. We get some website traffic from it. And I'll tell you, if those things go down, you hear it, I get a, I get an Is email or a right? phone call in like two seconds where somebody's That's like, great. Hey, we got, can't see the cams kind of thing. So That's great. Yeah. Um, the, the, um, camera out at the channel too, with, um, White Lake Association, they're yep. the ones who, um, you know, still really host or sponsor, you know, that yes, camera, but, it, um, with your assistance and making sure that it's working, that's awesome. Yeah, no, they do a great job and, Good. 
yeah. So yeah, we just want to help people solve problems. That's Love really it. what it is all about. Great. You've already touched on this also a little bit, but I'm going to um, have you just highlight maybe one example of a hurdle that you have overcome, you know, since you've, you've started with Catchmark Technologies. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of one specific hurdle. I think overall, um, finding great people. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think we have done that. I think Mm -hmm. we've been very fortunate to do that. Um, we've been very, um, we've taken some non, some, some unusual steps to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I firmly believe that culture eats strategy for breakfast. I think Peter Drucker said that, and, um, we're very big on that here and, and finding the right people that fit in with our Mm -hmm. culture. Um, we want people that are humble, hungry, and smart and, um, we want to grow them and we want people that are, have growth mindedness. And, um, that's a struggle sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say, you know, um, that's, that's a hard part of just finding those people and retaining them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're usually, if you find those people, they're usually pretty smart and they have opportunities mm-hmm. and convincing them to stay. Um, you know, I think that's probably one of the biggest hurdles we've had. Um, it, growing is a hurdle too. So, mm-hmm. so I touched on finding great people and culture. It, it's really hard to maintain culture as you get bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it was me and four other people, I'm talking to those four other people every single day. It, 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 it's kind of easy, you know, like, okay, we're all on this. I can see what you're doing. I know what's going on. You know, you get to 10 and that gets a little harder. You get to 15 and that gets a little harder. You get to 20 and it's even harder. And um, so I think that that's, that's hard. Um, and that's always going to be um, a, a hurdle or a difficult thing. And we're going to work on that all the time. And and it's also part of the most rewarding stuff you see. Sure. I think. So, yeah. And so probably your hurdles have also become your victories. For yeah. sure. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love the name Catchmark Technologies. Okay. Tell us where that came from. Yeah. So um, I have four partners uh, and I mentioned all of them. I, Chris Dawson, who's a lifelong friend I went to school with, Jeff Burrell, who also I went to school with, um, and, and Mr. Rick Blau. Um, and, and Rick is kind of, Rick and Chris are a little more behind the scenes. Um, most people see Jeff and I because we work in the business. Um, so three of the four of us have ties to the White Lake area. Um, the fourth one also has ties to the White Lake area, not quite as I would say ingrained ties, you know, Jeff and Chris and I all have family here still. We're all Montague grads. Um, Rick owned a place on White Lake um, for 15 years. He just sold it actually a couple years ago, maybe a year ago, um, and and lived up here. He's a member at White Lake Golf Course, and he loved it here. Um, and so as we started looking at names for the business, like you, that's a hard thing, by the way, like mm-hmm. figuring that out. Um, we started looking at okay, what do, what do we what do we want to be? What do we want to do? How do we tie this to where we're from? And so for a lot of people that don't know this, um, well, everybody knows Montague White House, a logging company sure. or co- company community. That's kind of where our roots are from. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so I, I got this weird idea. We were at the Montague museum one day and we're walking through and I'm like, they got all these old log marks and they call log marks catch marks. And actually, if you look up catch mark online, we come up and then there's a catch mark timber trust. Um, they're a trust for timber. And that's why, because it's, that's what it is. And so, um, logging companies of which there were 10 or 15 on white Lake would all roll their logs into the river together. And you just had this big mass, mass of logs that would float down the river to the mouth of the river, which is White Lake, and then they'd have to sort them out. And the way they sorted them out was they stamped their log mark, their catch mark, Mm -hmm. onto each one of them. And every log, it's kind of like a cattle brand in a sense, but every logging company had their own. And so as they get to the the mouth of the river, they'd sort them out and they'd get to the the sawmill and be able to be made into what they need to do. So we kind of took a play on that and said, okay, catch mark technologies. We feel technology is a little bit like that for, for the people that we're trying to support. Um, it can be confusing. It can be kind of a mess. If you've ever walked into a, a, a network closet for a small business who's been struggling to get that working, it looks like what the mouth of the river might look like with just stuff everywhere, <laughs> right? And so we a play on that name is we're going to help to do the same thing for technology for people. And we're going to sort it out. We're going to make sure that the tools and the things that you're using 
can be made into something and, mm-hmm. and that something is the business. So that's, that's kind of where the name came from. Not a lot of people know that. Mm-hmm. Um, no. We do have it on our website, but I, um, I was actually really surprised with how many people in, in this area don't know what a catch mark is. Okay. So, yeah. but yeah, you get a little me, history, yeah, a little history there. So I like it. Um, any parting message uh, for our viewers today? Yeah, I, I think I would just say give back. Um, help people. Um, whatever, whatever you do, whatever skill you have in life, um, use it to help people. Um, I think that uh, I, I think that I can't emphasize that too much. Um, we nobody gets to where they are where they're at by themselves, and uh, you know whether that's just coming alongside somebody and encouraging them, whether that's helping them with training, whether that's donating with a sponsorship help someone. And then the other thing I would say is be resilient. Um, you know, I talked in a a school class uh, last week and that was what I talked about is resilience. I think that's the number one trait for people, um, to, to be successful is just be resilient. Bad things happen. You can't control it. Mm -hmm. You control your response. So help people and be resilient. That's what I'd probably leave people with. I don't have anything great. Like Brad whipped out at the, uh, the dinner. (laughs) I don't know what, where that came from, but what, what did he say, Amy? Like, it's not the. Oh, um, it's uh, it's not the river that divides us, but the bridge that connects us. Brilliance. Brilliant. Brilliance. Yeah, we're so, using that. We are. So, you should we steal are that. So stealing it. I need to hire Brad as a marketing <laughs> yeah. guy. So, but yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of Brad Van Bergen with Winberg Construction, he is going to be um, a future guest. On awesome. Our we built this, and you and I probably could sit here and talk for another hour. I'm sure we um, could. Good stuff, and uh, we appreciate the information and for sharing with us today. Um, it is a delight having Catchmark Technologies in our community. We're really proud of the work that's being done here and your location right here in downtown Whitehall, um, providing a, a very valuable service to our businesses. So thank you for leading the charge. And we what love you it do. Good. All right. Um, with that, thanks again for joining us today. And I uh, look for our future episodes of We Built This White Lake. And our um, guests um, will be telling... Uh, the community a little bit about what uh, their business does here in Montague and Whitehall. So thank you once again. Be sure to check out uh, Catchmark's uh, YouTube channel. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, That's we, we've got five of them. Okay. Subscribe and like. That helps us to monetize that and helps to pay for the content we do. So great. Um, check them all out. All yeah. right. And also White Lake Area Chamber of Commerce's website is whitelake.org for additional information. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.